Let's get right to our conversation. Joining me now are George Salim, Senior Vice President for National Affairs at the ADL, and Kyle Spencer, author of Raising Them Right, the untold story of America's ultra-conservative youth movement and its plot for power. So, Kyle, uh, I think a lot of Americans in the main uh, were shocked uh, by what uh, felt like a massive surge um, in anti-Semitism hitting the country uh, this past year. Uh, when you look at, for example, Donald Trump dining with self-proclaimed Hitler lovers, Kanye West and Nick Fuentes, too, increases in anti-Semitic attacks uh, and, and hot rhetoric uh, online. Uh, what's your assessment of what this is all about and, and what's behind it? What's pushing it? So I think what we're seeing is a hate game. And I think on some level it's very personal and this hate against the Jewish people is a very personal thing, but it's also kind of a broad attempt to just create sca uh, scapegoats. And I think particularly with Donald Trump and when some of these young activists that are constantly trying to seek attention, what they're looking for is to stoke fear, rage, and anger. And Trump has done that really, really well, but I think what we're seeing is his power waning and we're seeing these kind of desperate attempts to continue to stoke anxiety. And unfortunately, uh, Jewish Americans often play that terrible role. Uh, so that's, I think, the kind of heart of what we're seeing right now is just let's try to find something to agitate people. And it's hateful. It's really hateful. So, George, the U.S. Uh, Conference of Mayors and the ADL released a new ma uh, mayor's compact uh, to combat hate and extremism. Uh, it was signed by a bipartisan group of 164 mayors. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, that and the strategies and resolutions that are part of that and, and what your group has seen since it was released? Sure. So let me start out by with agreeing uh, with my panelist here, Kyle, in terms of her diagnosis of the problem set. Uh, Michael, the Marist Compact that you allude to wasn't something that we initiated last month, last week, or last year. This is something that we initiated in the days and weeks after the horrific display of anti-Semitism and bigotry that we saw in Charlottesville in August of 2017. Since then, ADL has launched a formidable ground game, working with mayors and municipal leaders across the country to amass a list of best practices and commitments, really, that leaders at the local levels, mayors, city council members, local municipal leaders can adhere to and really pledge themselves to to combat these levels of anti-Semitism, bias, and bigotry that you alluded to in the opening segment at all levels across the country. And the last point that I'll mention is that in January, the National Conference of Mayors is coming together in Washington, D.C., and ADL will be working in conjunction with the National Conference of Mayors to lead this new push that mayors across the country want to be on the front lines are pushing against anti-Semitism and extremism in their cities. So, so Kyla, the, the, the push against this, um, the George uh, references and all the, the resources that are being put into educating and former Americans, a very important point. But while that's happening, um, Turning Point USA is holding its big America Fest in Phoenix, and everyone from Carrie Lake to Tucker Carlson to Donald Trump Jr. will be there. And so you can anticipate a little bit of <laughs> noise. What should we know about events like that? So the, the right wing has been holding these types of events and trying to stoke rage and to grow its following for years and years. But since Trump was elected, those events have become increasingly aggressive, angry, raging, and really veering away from conservative policy points and really veering towards culture war, angst, and just a lot of bashing of the woke liberals and a lot of kind of mockery. Um, I think that what we're seeing in this particular event this year, and I've been to a dozen of these events. I mean, I spent while working on my book, so much time at these events. And what you saw during the Trump years was these kind of really like fantastic conference like or concert like uh, fiascos and some stuff that was just almost cultish. But what we're seeing at this one this year is there are allegedly 10,000 kids there. Turning Point usually uh, overplays its numbers, but I think it's fair to say it's bigger that it has been in the past because they always seem to gather more followers. But it is very dark. It is very apocalyptic. 
These kids don't look like they're having fun. It's very bitter. And I think that's extremely important for all of us to note because I think it's indicative of where the Republican Party is right now. Grasping for straws, kind of alienating people, and getting into this dark, bitter space that isn't really working. So, so George, how, how the country responds to that and certainly how this administration responds to events like this is very, very important. What do you make of uh, the Biden administration's effort to set up a new interagency group to combat anti-Semitism? And what do you hope comes out of that? So, Michael, I was in the room uh, with the second gentleman representing ADL and, and a range of other organizations that were there as he as the second gentleman kind of made this pledge and made this commitment. Um, I heard firsthand from the second gentleman, from Susan Rice, from other leaders in this administration that really have, have spoken out forcefully uh, against this, this really unprecedented pattern of anti-Semitic and hate-fueled uh, number of incidents across the country. I think the strategy is a good step. I'll also just add, and, and Michael, I think you'll appreciate this, particularly in the weeks leading up to this, I also had the good opportunity to meet with Senator Lankford, Senator Rosen, members of the uh, House and Senate caucuses uh, to combat anti-Semitism. There is bipartisan and bicameral mm -hmm. uh, unity around this effort. I think we need to take advantage of that as a country. When we have Democrats and Republicans in the House and in the Senate, as well as in the White House, unified behind a common set of goals and principles of standing up and speaking out against anti-Semitism and bias and bigotry in all its forms, there's really nothing we can't do. I just hope the momentum carries into an actual application of programs and policies to allow the executive branch, as well as state and locals, to do more to combat this, this epidemic that we're facing. George, I couldn't agree with you more. And the leadership voice in this narrative is so, so incredibly important. And I appreciate your pointing that out. George Salim and Kyle Spencer, thank you both very much for joining us.